In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about embodiment. Now, when we are embodied, it really means that we have a fuller life experience. We have a richer life experience and we feel more alive because we are connected to our mental bodies and our physical, our emotional and our energy bodies. So there are different reasons why we become disembodied. And I think that's a topic for a whole other video is why we become disembodied. But often we have these uncomfortable and undesirable feelings and emotions that are present in the body and we avoid feeling them. The problem comes in when we get into this habit of continuously being disembodied because we then become numb. We literally numb ourselves. So we don't only stop feeling those undesirable and uncomfortable feelings, but we also stop feeling pleasure and we stop feeling joy. We stop feeling alive. Back in my 20s, there was a period in my life where I was very homesick. And what would happen is when this homesickness struck me, I would grab my diary and I would start looking at dates and I would start planning my trip back home and start thinking of different um, ideas of how I could make this happen. And that was really because it was so difficult and, and painful for me to feel my heart sore and to feel my heart ache. It was easier for me to escape into my mind that became like a safe haven for me. And that's what happens. We use our minds as an escape mechanism, but an embodied woman allows herself to feel all of those feelings, even the painful and the undesirable ones. And you don't have to go all the way into them, but we don't avoid them. We don't shy away from them. We welcome them into our experience. And this is a very important point because it's not, we don't feel these feelings because we want to change them or we want them to become something different. We're really feeling them as part of our full life experience. And then something magical happens. The moment when you allow this in, the moment that we stop resisting feeling the pain and we allow ourselves to become intimate with everything that is there, it has a way of transforming and freeing up the energy that gets frozen and locked inside of us as a result of this pain that we're feeling. So that's the first sign of an embodied woman. She allows everything and welcomes everything, all of the feelings and the emotions into her experience. Now, the second sign of an embodied woman has to do with our own natural rhythms. We live in a world that very much functions by a 24 hour clock. So you get up in the morning, you go to work or do whatever it is that you do during the day. You come home, you sleep and the next day you repeat it again. And what we often experience, and I know this is true for me, it's true for my clients as well, is we expect of ourselves to be the same every day to have the same energy level, to have the same um, output, to have the same mood and sensations throughout our day. And that simply for us as women is not possible, right? The reason for this is because we don't work on a 24 hour clock. We work on uh, average, we work on a 28 day clock, right? It has to do with our hormones, it has to do with our cycle. So an embodied woman, follows the natural rhythm of her own body. And what this means is that she uses her bleed cycle to determine and plan her actions and her activities. How this looks in my life, for example, is I won't record any videos or do any start with any new pro pro uh, projects or initiatives when I start my bleed because I don't have a lot of energy available then. I'm not really motivated. I don't even want to talk to people um, during that part of my cycle. So I rather reserve 
the things that need a lot of energy for the times in my cycle when I have more energy available. And of course, we don't live in a world where this is an easy thing to do. But what we can do as women is even if you can't plan your activities at work or at home around where you are in your cycle, you can begin to be more gentle and understanding and compassionate towards yourself with regards to what your energy and your mood does through this 28 day cycle. And don't expect of yourself to always, you know, be able to deliver and to perform at the same level. The third sign of an embodied woman is that we don't believe everything that we think. So our brains have this beautiful and wonderful capability. What it does, it takes the, the thoughts and the actions that we do regularly and consistency consistently and it puts it into a program and this program then gets activated it makes us super efficient because it means you don't have to think and put energy and awareness in completing certain tasks this program runs in the background without you having to even think about it sometimes though these programs that run become outdated and the traditional way of dealing with these outdated programs that we become aware of is we use mindset methods. These thoughts and beliefs and stories and programs, they might exist in the level of the mind, and this is where we then try and change them, but they express themselves and they become alive in the body. There is always a double loop. As much as our thoughts create our feelings and our experiences and our sensations, the way that we interpret things, as much as our thoughts are responsible for that, just as much are our thoughts a product of what is happening in here. So our mind also serves as a processor and it takes all of the data that is alive in my physical body, the data that's alive in my emotional body and in my energy body. It takes all of that data and it makes a thought out of it. So an embodied woman knows that she cannot believe everything that she thinks. All right, there's always more information available than what exists on the mental plane. So feminine energy is always moving. Think of mother nature. The sun is always moving in the sky. There's always a wind somewhere. There are always clouds. I live in a part of the world where we are slowly moving into springtime, which I'm very grateful for. But as we are moving into spring, we sometimes have two and even three seasons in a day where it would snow in the morning and a little while later in the afternoon, the sun would be out and it would be really, really nice to feel the warm sun on your skin as opposed to the cold and um, chill snow of the morning. So this is what Mother Nature does. She is never constant. She's always moving. And embodied women use this principle to move their own life force energy through their bodies. So when we spoke about those feelings um, in the very first, first point, the feelings that, that we don't always want to feel because they are uncomfortable and undesirable. Often when we feel these feelings, when we allow them to be part of our experience, what happens is they begin to flow through us. And embodied movement practices supports this flow of energy. So these movement practices can look like anything. They can look like a walk outside in nature. They can look like dancing. They can look like a feminine meditation. And just a word on that. So a masculine type of meditation is where we would be really still. We wouldn't move our bodies where a feminine meditation practice is really about dropping deeper into the body, about moving everything that is there and physically moving and sounding and breathing into everything 
that we experience. So an embodied woman uses her body. All right, and now the final sign of being an embodied woman, sign number five, is that we use our bodies to guide our decisions. We live in a time where it's often encouraged that we look outside of ourselves to some authority to tell us what's wrong with us, what do we need to feel better, what decisions are going to be better for us. And there's nothing wrong in looking and going for these expert opinions. I mean, if you're sick, you want to go to a doctor so that they can help you to get better. But when we are always looking for this validation and this reassurance and this advice about what we need to do and how we need to take care of ourselves and what our next step should be, if we're always looking for that outside of ourselves, we're giving away our power. It's a very disempowering way of being. As an embodied woman, what we do is we connect into the body to guide us. So what this looks like is when you have a decision to make, instead of going outwards and looking at what other people think should be your next step, is take a moment and drop within. And you can feel into the, the different possibilities or the different options that are available and notice what comes alive in the body. What is your body's experience of this decision? And you'll notice with practice that you begin to develop like a hard yes and a hard no that can guide you in any decision in your life. And it doesn't only have to be in the very big decisions, but it really becomes this embodied way of being where we rely on our bodies and our own wisdom to guide us. It becomes a, a way of life even in the smaller things. So embodied women know that embodiment is not a once-off thing. Rather, it's a continuous practice. It's a daily practice even where you consciously come back into the body, where you consciously come back and connect with what is alive inside of you. And what you will notice is, and this is what I've seen in my own life, and I speak to you as a very disembodied woman in my past. I was very disembodied. But what I've noticed is as I'm bringing these embodiment principles into my life, it's easier for me to notice when I am disembodied and when I then do a practice or come back into my body, it's easier for me to stay there for longer. If you have enjoyed this video, I'd love for you to let me know that by giving it a thumbs up and also share with me in the comments how this landed for you. Are there any of these embodied woman signs that resonated the most with you that, that you see more present in your life? I'd love to know. So share with me in the comments and also share this video with anyone who you think might find it helpful.